Hey, what's happening? This is Mr. Me Open, otherwise known as Mr. LBN. And we finna do a tutorial on how to install, well, actually not install. You should be, it's really easy to install, but we're gonna teach you how to use a program for ROM hacking F0 X called FZEP or F0 Execution Project which is essentially taking some of the elements from the expansion kit that allowed you to make custom courses and allowing people who um, you couldn't get access to the expansion kit to make them for their own personal ROM. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have downloaded this already and I will leave a link in the video description so you can go directly to that link and get the shit you need. Okay, I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to go ahead and open up FZEP. First thing you're going to see here, I'll read it to you. Under certain conditions, courses will fail to load once patched to the ROM. If control points are too close together, the course will fail to load. If a course curves too sharply, the <laughs> course will fail to load. If there are too many decorative elements on the course, the course will fail to load. Remember to check the recalculate head checksum checkbox if you want to immediately play patched courses on a console or an emulator. To see this notice in the future, you can access the help files. All right, let's break it down. Let's break it down. So the first thing I want you to do, and this is just the way I go about doing things. Let's say if you have a fresh install of this program, go directly to Windows, click Course Properties, click Element Properties, click Preview, click Camera. Those are going to be your four things you click right off the bat. And you can structure these any which way you want. The, the, my personal way to do it for this workload, I take the preview and move it to the top left and I expand it, make it pretty big. I take my camera, I move it to the right. I take my elements property, I move it also to the right sitting on top of the camera and I kind of keep my courses thing right in the middle. And I'm going to explain this. Preview should be self-explanatory. Now, when you look at this, there's no textures or anything like that. So what you do is you go to file, you go to load textures from file, and you click the textures. This allows you to just see everything that you would normally see in the game. And the first thing I want to go ahead and go over is course properties. Just this, this is actually simple and straightforward. So obviously it says new track. This is where you would put the, the venue name. So Mute City or Bianca City or Port Town, Lightning, what else? A Green Plant or Devil's Forest in this case. Silence. That's exactly what you put in the name. The description would be different. So I'm going to type in Mute City, and I'm going to go to the description, and I'm going to type in Tutorial Course. All right, that's very simple. When you go to Miscellaneous, this allows you to change the music section selection, it allows you to change the venue, you know, Port Town, Big Blue, Sand Ocean. This is pretty self-explanatory. The sky, I don't really like the sky to be pink, so I'm going to change it to blue. And your elements, I'm actually going to go ahead and show you how the camera works here. So I click Add an Element, and it's at angle zero. And we're going to go ahead and go to the camera, and we're going to go ahead and click. If you see where my mouse is, you click this button on the right-hand side. And what it does is it, it's almost as, as if you're in the, the, the machine itself. So this tilts you up or the bottom button tilts you down. These are the buttons that I normally press and click. The other ones, if you experiment with them, you, you'll see. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm left to right, you know, I'm, I'm uh, sh uh, uh, what is that called? Strafing. That's what the, all that good shit is. What I normally do when I'm designing a track, especially the layout in particular, I always do the az uh, the azimuth, azimuth, well, however you pronounce that, put that to zero. I put the elevation to 270, and I also put the skew to zero as well. That gives me a top-down perspective on how I want to make the layout, because this the, the, I'm teaching you the way I do it. Once you get a feel for how this program works, you got to do the thing that works best for you when you want to make a course. Okay, so uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. I'm actually going to go ahead and zoom up, and I'm going to show you. I can change that, you know, change the... Uh, this is, these are the background uh, um, horizon images that you will see in the game. 
and the angle i'm going to type it in if i type in 10 it moves over 10 units type type in 20 moves over 20 units if i do 360 it's back at zero because 360 makes a perfect circle so if i'm at 300 it's better for me to type in 320 or 330 you see how it's right there it's next to it and we're just gonna leave that at zero we're gonna make one at 50 and then we're gonna add another one at 250 and we'll just keep it simple and this is the tour course uh, you can exit out of that or keep it open if you want. We're actually going to come back to this later. Now this, your elements property and your camera, press your preview. These are the most, in these two elements and camera, these are the most important things you will be using in conjunction with your preview. These are the most important. This is what allows you to build your track, to see it, to build it. So... How we go ahead and build the track, it's like a circuit. It's based on coordinates, right? So you see that this uh, control point is highlighted. That means the control point is active for the user to move around. So what I can do is I can click and drag, as it tells you here, or you could type in what you want your coordinates to be. For the most part, I usually do a click and drag until I'm looking for something extremely precise. That's just how I do it. And it shows you the width of your track. So, and I'll actually type in, you know, for the left, gets a little bigger. And I'm going to type in like, you know, 80 to show you on the right hand side. You see how wide it gets? Pretty self explanatory. I'm going to bring that back to 26. And your banking, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and show you what the banking does. So, if I bank it, or if I uh, click and drag to my left, the track will be tilted to its left. You see what I mean? Or if I do it to the right, track tilts to the right. And if it's it's like uh, angling, 90 degrees is sideways, right? 180 degrees, upside down. 360, right side up. You know, and, and actually, they didn't actually put zero for you. So if you type in 360, it goes directly to zero. So because... One and two will always be left alone for me personally. The reason why one and two are left alone is because that's your starting grid. That's where the machines actually start on the course. So, and you can see here, it shows the lap marker for the decorations on the bottom left hand side. So we're going to go to coordinate number three and we're going to explain to you decorations and structure. Very simple. They all do the same thing. Uh, gate. You see that there's a gate right there, right? Very simple or a decoration TV billboard overhead monitors which is actually one of my favorite props by the way i don't know why i just like the way it looks and you can also put some buildings you see what i mean very very simple anytime you go to decorations or structure or a gate it's always going to show up on the control point that you have selected it will always show up on your control point that you have selected and when you actually put down something for example, I have a venue skyscraper. If you go to your course properties and you look at your widgets number, it increases. Now, if I put a TV billboard, my widget increases as well. I believe you can only have up to 16 without the game glitching out. So now that that's over and done with, we're going to go to segments. And this is where things get interesting because this is where you put your dash plates, your healing strips, your dirt patches, your slip patches your jump plates and your traps the, these are the these are the elements right here you know you the track elements and you also have your um they call it a base appearance but there should be it should be i don't know what it should be called but it's not just a base appearance because it changes the properties of the course if i go to high wall you can clearly see if we zoom in that i have changed segment number 3 to 4 as a high wall Whenever you change your your track segment to something else, like for example, I'll say pipe, it will always go from the control point that you have selected to the control point that is always in front of it. It will never, ever go in reverse. So if you want to have a pipe go from, let's say, control point six to control point seven, 
you always click control point six and the pipe will always go to seven. It'll never go from six to five. It just won't do it. And also another thing, and I won't actually have to explain this, even though I will, and you will see it. I'm going to go from a pipe and I want to go to a high wall immediately. The game will never allow you to do that. It will never allow you to do that. I can't even go from a pipe to a no wall section. It, it just cannot happen. So what that means is when you are putting your uh, when you're changing from a tunnel to a pipe to a cylinder, if you want to go from a cylinder to a tunnel, you always need to place a normal track segment first and then you transition into what other um, core structure you'd want it to transition into. So if I want to go from a tunnel to a pipe, I need to make a tunnel and then I need to make a normal track and then I can make the pipe. It just won't work otherwise, unless you're a really good hacker, which I'm not. So, we're going to go back to control point three, change that back to normal, and I'm going to go ahead and show you dash plate. Simple. It's either the center, or it's on the left, or it's on the right. That's very simple. It's the same thing with the slip zone. Well, a little different. You know, it's a, it gives you the options, and when you tinker with it, it shows you. Both sides, left side, right side, or center. Your dart zone, same concept. Your pit area is actually the same concept. But understand there's one little caveat with the pit area. If you put a pit area in the center, it won't show up. Because that is exclusive to the expansion kit. Why? I have no idea. It just is. Are you hungry? And You're always hungry. a jump plate is very interesting. Because you would assume that if you are on control point three and you click on a jump plate and you say full width... And you're zoomed into control point three and you're not looking anywhere else. You'd be like, well, where's the jump plate? When you put down a jump plate, jump plates will always show up on the control point after the control point you place it on. Now, I don't know why it does that, but yeah, control point three is putting a jump plate on control point four. And you could zoom in and you can see it right here. You can either make it left side or right side. Pretty simple. And traps work very similar to a jump plate in the sense that they will never show up directly centered from the control point. A trap, even though it visually doesn't show it here, I'm placing it center. So it goes from control point three to control point four. You will see traps from these sections here. So in between control point three and control point four, that's where the traps will show up. And I think that's pretty much it for that. Now, obviously, you can go to Texas. You can change it, make your, you know, make your track as funky as you possibly want. Now, when we go to miscellaneous, this is a little interesting because when it when it comes to miscellaneous, for the most part, I use translate and I use scale. Uh, and uh, I guess I can explain. Actually, I can't explain rotate too much. Rotate is a little iffy for me because I barely use it. Rotation is essentially, I think the best kind of rotation you can really do is your skew. And I'm actually going to test that real quick. Actually, incorrect. Let me take that back. I screwed that up. Uh, yeah, I screwed that up. I'm trying to show you how. what's the proper, I think it's elevation. No, that's not it either. I'm going to go ahead and click new. The azimuth. Okay, so you, well, I'm going to have to go ahead and move a control point to show you what it's doing. That is perfect. In all honesty, when it comes to the rotate section, for me personally, I'm not going to say for everybody, but I think for the majority of people who want to get into uh, making courses, that's the only thing you're really going to need. Let's say you design a full course, but you want to rotate the entire course. That's exactly what that allows you to do. So I'm rotating it by 20 units. And if I want to go in reverse, I will always put in a minus sign before the number. So now I'm rotating it in the opposite direction. Very, uh, very straightforward. This, this program, once you get used to it, it's pretty intuitive, actually. It has a pretty good user interface. And the scale fact, that's another one that I actually use. And this will tie into the AI. So 
And I'll give you an example. Let's say you're replacing the first mute city. I don't know how long it actually is, but let's say it's 7,000 units. Your course length, which is on your course property. You can see it right here. Let's say you replace that and your course is actually 9,000 meters. If you do not create your course to allow you to maintain extremely high speed, no matter how good you are, you're going to lose. Because the AI are programmed to go at a set uh, set general speed or try to complete the course in a set time. So you got to keep be cognizant of that when you replace a course. And I'm going to give you another example. Um, a course from the original game where the AI, they move at a moderate speed and it's 4,000 uh, units. You replace it with something that's 6,000 units, but you're going extremely fast. You're going to win very easily. It's not going to be a challenge. So you, you got to, that's one of the creative aspects that I like about FZEP over the expansion kit. And the thing about the expansion kit is that the AI, even on master difficulty, they're just simply too easy. You know, once you get to a certain skill level at this game, they become too easy no matter, you know, they're just, they're just easy. This, you can actually make it so that the best player can have an extremely hard time coming in first place. But the only way you can really do that in many cases is to make something extremely unbalanced or prevent them from even doing a DTD. You know what I mean? Okay, so back to this uh, lineup. I personally don't use that too much because you can actually line them up with um, with a numerical value, and we'll get to that. And center track, I use that uh, in two cases. When I am actually shaping the track and I'm going a bit too far off the plane, that's when I will center the track. So let's say if I go from control point one and I'm making a control point. I, I added a control point, by the way, and I'm going all the way to fuck out in right field and I keep going. Keep going. Keep pushing the envelope. It's going to get to the point where it's not going to allow me to move anything. Like right now, it won't. So what I do is center track, and I add another control point, and keep extending myself out. That's that's what center track really does. And scaling your course width, like I told you, if you have a course that's a uh, bigger than what you're replacing, you can scale the course down. So if I type in 0.99 and I pray just do this for me when you do it because this is the most sensitive way you can reduce a track size and you click scale you see how it slowly gets smaller over time and the course link shrinks the numerical value shrinks it's exactly what I'm talking about you can shrink it 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 or you can do the exact opposite you can increase it so type in 1.01 and you scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it, scale it. You make it bigger, 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 bigger. It gets bigger, bigger, bigger. It inflates like an erection. Okay. You can also do that in, um, you can scale the course width. Now, what that does is if you have, and I'll actually show you really. I'm going to shrink it down first without this clicked. I'm going to shrink it down really small. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on scale course width. And you will actually see, I'm going to show you too with the numerical value. We're on 26. So when I scale course width, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I go back to control points, and I click 1 again, we're at 42 on the left and right. That's what that does. And your translation, very similar to the rotate for azimuth. So your X coordinates, that's like on your graph paper. For some bizarre reason, the Y is supposed to be Y is supposed to be Z and Z is supposed to be Y. Just keep that in mind, because you know, in most cases, most people assume, well, X is your horizontal plane, Y is your vertical plane, and Z is your uh, your, your your um your height. You know, you're going up or you're going down. If you're looking at something that's three dimensional, so I'm gonna type in fifty. X. You see how it's shifting everything over? Now, if I type in negative 50, it shifts everything to the left. You know what I'm saying? Shift it right, shift it left. And we're going to go down to the Z, which is supposed to be your Y axis. Do the exact same thing. Translate moves it down. If I type in negative 50, it's going to move it up. And, and now... Uh, the legitimate moving up or moving down is your Y, which is supposed to be your Z axis. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the camera. If you can see where the camera is, uh, this is basically, you, it's almost like 
just look at it as if you're piloting an actual F-Zero machine in-game. It's showing you that if you click this particular button on the top right-hand side, you tilt your machine up or you tilt your machine down. I'm actually not going to be clicking these other buttons right now. I'll show you that later. Or I might not show you at all. You, you might actually just have to experiment with that. But I'm showing you the way that I normally design a track. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to this. I don't know if I explained it to you or not, but, you know, you change your music, you change your venue. I obviously change the sky. You can add elements here. I did show you that, but I deleted the track, so, you know, just put these in. Make it look decent. Okay. Very, very simple. Yeah, we're good to go here. All right. So let's go back to this. I don't actually click make ROM friendly or EK friendly unless it's a very dire situation, which hopefully that never shows up for you. But I guarantee you it's going to show up here and there. So always try to test your tracks here and there. Don't don't complete something. Design bad everything. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm guilty with this. I will design an entire track and put elements everywhere and only to test it to see that it just don't work. So keep the we'll go back to the beginning of the video and read that prompt to avoid situations like that. And right now I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I'm going to show you a clip from my phone of me drawing a track on a, on graph paper and I'm basically going to translate it from that graph paper to, to the program. This is Mr. Me Open and this is a little clip doing a top-down drawing of a tutorial track that I'm going to be uh, posting up. For F0 execution project, uh, short term FZEP, which is an F0X ROM hacking software that allows you to make custom tracks and uh, basically uh, uh, inject them into the ROM. So let's just go ahead. I'm using graph paper, by the way. Let's see here. Uh, nothing too crazy. Something as simple as that and a jump towards the end. It's not perfect, but you'll see that in the editor. How to translate your top-down view from graph paper into the program itself. This is just the way I go ahead and do it. So, you're going to go to your camera. You're going to go to elevation on the right-hand side. Type in 270. That's going to give you a top-down view. Just like what you did on the graph paper. So, I'm going to go ahead and recreate... The try uh, uh, what I just drew, and I'm gonna do this in. Um, I'm probably gonna speed. I might speed this up. I might not. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the best I can to do this. So, control points one and control points two. All right. So we see here that they are. We're gonna put 275 for both of these. Why am I doing this? Because they're both on the x axis. If you can make uh, about four to five control points with the same x or y numerical value it creates a straight line it doesn't seem like that now but that's because we're simply starting the circuit you'll see it over time i'm going to push this up i'm going to go ahead and push this up and i'm going to go back 275 and then 275 and now I'm going to go ahead and center the track like I told you to do once you're getting close to the um, outer plane. And I'm going to have to make the turn coming up here, which is exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. This is probably one of the most discombobulating parts of uh, track design when you when you first make a track because uh, your control points are all... It, it looks weird when you're designing something until you can start getting the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and make my curve right here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and use the control points that are already existing to move them. Okay. You can slowly see how we are starting to shape up a track here. And it's not going to be an exact replica of what we drew on the graph paper, but it's, you know, it's going to be something decent. Uh, decent for the tutorial. 
And, uh, you know, it's not going to be perfect starting off. So don't, don't try to make it perfect when you're just uh, creating it. Just get the base general shape going. And then that's when you refine it. Yeah, add another control point. Keep going. Go to control point 13. Go to 14. And you see how it's slowly coming to shape here? Slowly coming to shape here. I was going to add a jump, but we'll see how well that works. And that's supposed to be 275, I believe. Actually, no, it's not because we, we moved something. So that should be... So, all right. So, for example, I'm going to go back to control. All right, 445. That's what these are all going to be. And the starting grid is a little too short. So here's what I'm going to go ahead and do. 445. I'm going to push this up. Yeah, that should be enough length. And I'm going to put 445. Now keep in mind, control point 2 and control point 3 are way too close together. So you know what's going to happen? The game's going to crash. I'm telling you right now, they cannot be that close together. Don't even try it. The game will give you a big double fuck you. Okay, 445. And I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit here. Now, because I'm doing this from a top-down perspective, if you look at the game line, it's kind of in the middle. It kind of gives you a visual on how this might show up on the mini-map. So you can kind of get an idea of how smooth your track is starting to look. And just, you know, just experiment. You know what I mean? That's all you really got to do is experiment. Try to enjoy the process. Don't be like me and stress yourself out over every damn thing. Put some music on or a podcast. That's what I pretty much recommend. Once you get a feel for it, that's what I'd recommend you doing so you don't drive yourself nuts. Uh, yeah, but that could just be me projecting because even if I do something leisurely, like such as drawing or something like this or level design, I'm already stressed the fuck out. I'm pissed the hell off. It seems that it's a curse with my mind that that just happens. Like my hobbies piss me off. They don't, and then it just, I don't know what it is. So now you see, we're starting to get the shape. We're starting to get structure here. And you just keep doing it. You keep doing it. You just keep going at it. 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 You see what I'm saying? You see how it's starting to take its nice shape and form? Add another control point, you know. Keep going. Go back. Keep shaping it, you know. Just shape it as much as you really need to. Just shape it. Twist it. Bop it. Turn it. I can't believe I'm thinking of that right now. Uh, Yellow. Let's see here. How are you? I'm going to have that right there. I was going to put a jump there, but I'm going to keep it simple I'm in just to show you how this operates. Making, uh, made 10, All right, um, let's see. Bring that down because I want that to be lined up. You can see how it lines itself up. Make 10 yeah, there we go. I making my tenth hat this morning and okay. So now we have a very basic tutorial course, but we're not done here yet. So what we need to do, I'm going to go back to control point one. And what I'm going to go, this is my personal thing that I do. I always make sure that control point one and control point two are extremely close to 20. I like to um, constrict the starting grid a bit. Now this is where I'm going to have the elements. So let's go ahead and zoom in because you already see a problem right here. You see, because everything is flat. So we're going to get to the point where we can actually raise this section up here. And that will come in with the Y bracket. So, let's go to control point three. And we're going to go to segment. I'm going to change that. And we're going to put a high wall right here. 
And that's where I'm going to put my first dash plate. Right in the center. And keep going, keep going. I'm going to put a trap field on the right hand side. Now, just, just to test it. Now, I'm going to show you something about banking. There's a trick when it comes to banking for the AI. Uh, with a turn like this, I'd recommend don't do anything more than 20 units. And what I mean by that is if you go, um, if you type in 20, it's going to bank itself in. Now, if you want it to bank outwards towards the left, you're going to have to go from zero. And it starts from 360. So if I go to 350, that's basically negative 10. I would highly recommend you don't go to 330. Anything below 330, the AI, in, in many cases, depending on how the track is designed, they're going to die. So just keep it at 340. And in some cases, they'll fall off when it's 340. You know, you never know. Sometimes you got to test your shit. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a tunnel. Going to make that an orange tunnel. Going to make another tunnel. Keep that brown. I'm going to go back and change the texture here. Now, here is the section that we're, we're trying to figure out here. Or maybe you're just going to have a nice tan from now on. So what we got to do is we got to raise this up a little bit. 20. 50. And we're going to go to 80. You see? If I zoom down, if I scroll down, you can clearly see... You see that? It's perfect, isn't it? It's nice. Mm -hmm. Now, because we're pretty much on a straightaway here, you can actually make a dip. Yeah. If I put this directly at zero, and I move that closer to the control mm -hmm. into control point eleven, it's like a little jump without a jump pad. Okay. Because if you look at it from an angle, if you're going fast enough, you'll jump right off of that. Okay. So. Let me go back in this tunnel. I'm going to go ahead and put some pit areas. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go ahead and put no wall just for the hell of it. You know, it's a tutorial <coughs> track just to show you what can show up. And what am I going to do here? Oh, wrong button. This will be three. It's 340. There we go. Probably 350 would be better. I'm going to keep that at zero. And then I'm going to go do a high wall. Oh, oh, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Because I have a no wall, you cannot go from no wall to high wall or a high wall to tunnel. You just can't do it. The game will not allow it. You just can't. It's not possible. So don't try it. <laughs> I just showed you. Prime example. Okay. So... What am I going to do here? I'm going to go ahead and type in 340. I'm going to go ahead and go to the next control point, type in 300 to see what it does. Just to, uh, I typed that in wrong. Just to see what it's doing here. All right, so 340, 320. I'm going to go ahead and type in 300. You can see how it's it's slowly banking to almost be upside down. Well, uh, to the side, basically. Uh, 280. Wow. And I'm going to go ahead and go to 260. And then I'm going to bring it back to normal. So it'll go from 260 to 260 again. And then it will be 280. And then it will be... 320. That's a little dangerous uh, right there. So I'm going to go back a little bit and, and, and change this. So I'm going to go from, because I have two 260s. I have a 260 here and I got a 260 here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, I'm going to put that as 280. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this next one that's 280 to 320. And I'm going to go ahead and take that 320 yeah. and bump it up one, to 340. We're going to start throwing, throwing cards at you. So now, let me go back and add some elements. You can use the scroll wheel to do that. As long as you're on the the cell for the control point and, and you're like hovered over the number or the cell, you can just use the mouse wheel to go back. It's fast. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put dash plate. Because we want dash plates. Dash plates are fun. A high wall. And then I'm going to put a dash plate to the left. And then another high wall. I'm going to put a dart zone on both sides. And then another dash plate on the right. And then another high wall. And then we're going to have a slip zone on the right. That's good. Slip zone on both sides. And I think we're good there. Let's see. Let's make it a tunnel again. No, I don't want that. Make it an orange tunnel. And, and one more dash plate right towards the ending. Then we're going to have a pit area on the right side. That's it. That's how you make a course. It's really that simple. And I'm actually not going to be testing this, really, because I really don't want to spend too much time on this. Now, this is 6,000 units, correct? So, this should actually be just as easy, if not easier, than Mute City figure eight because it's actually shorter in length it's actually got a smaller width and there's more than enough healing strips and dash plates to keep you to keep you and, and maintain your speed if you would like to test this course yourself i'm actually going to leave a link in the description so you can just grab it and download and look at it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i'm actually going to add some decorations just for the hell of it you know just a few decorations not too many Sounds like a good Just thing. enough. Just enough. And I thank you for watching this tutorial video. Hopefully I have explained everything that needs to be explained. So that you, the viewer, and the listener, can get to customizing your courses. Do you do your shit. Have some fun with this game. Because it this is a good game. Came out in 1997, 1998. It still holds up to this day. The graphics, not so much. But the gameplay, absolutely. This is Mr. Meuven, otherwise known as Mr. LBN. Appreciate you taking the time out to watch this tutorial video. Have a good one now. I done screwed up something I forgot to mention. In order to patch your tracks to a ROM, and this is the most important part. You can't play it if you don't patch it. You go to patch the ROM. And you go to input ROM. So you input ROM is basically your original ROM file. So make a copy of your original F0X ROM. Okay. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is I've already done this myself. I have a copy. And then it, if you click on copy or your original, it creates an output ROM itself with MFD. That's what it does. I don't know why, but it just does. So if you go to selected course here, you can click on Jack 1, 2, 3, 4, Queen 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, King or Joker, you're basically replacing the track in the game. So obviously we're replacing the first course, which is a figure eight, load from file. So we're gonna go ahead and find out where that is. And I, I entitled it Tutorial Circuit. And if I click patch, you're ready to go. If I patch this right now and I load up my emulator and I load up the MFD uh, ROM, I can play this course. No problem at all. So, this is the final goodbye. Take care now.